Now chances are by now if you're watching this video you're probably wondering to yourself, gee, I wonder if they're ever going to go through and following up with a Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 video game. And to that I say, well I'm asking the same question, but even if that were to arise and we do get a Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 video game over the course of the next couple of months, potentially even years, when comparing Xenoverse 3, the potential of Xenoverse 3, how much can they really improve? Dimps and Bandai Namco in comparison to what we've seen for Xenoverse 2 and Xenoverse 1. I think it's very universal at this point to see the improvements made from Xenoverse 2 to Xenoverse 1 and having a drastic difference in character creation, customizable options, battles, story mode options, parallel quests, expert missions, hell, even the netcode has improved since Xenoverse 1. However, with Xenoverse 2, over the course of the last three years, the game has essentially become an unplayable game. People are not playing it as much and I will say credit goes out to every single modder within the modded community for Xenoverse because if it were not for them, nobody would be playing the game. And the one considerable factor for PC users that do go back in wanting to play the game again are the mods and people creating customizable characters, customizable maps, customizable parallel quests, customizable expert missions, the list goes on. And that's all fine and dandy, but what about the console players? Universally speaking, I truly do think that at this point in time, every single person is a essentially ready for a third installment. But it's really up to Dimps and Bandai and Namco if they want to go through and making a third game, which I do think is looming over the horizon. And with that being said, I do want to go on ahead and tackle some key points in this video, as this is going to be a part one of this massive, I suppose, Xenoverse 3 rant video in comparison to what we've seen in Xenoverse 2 and not wanting that for Xenoverse 3. Now, number one, I think it's safe to say that most of the characters for Xenoverse 2 are very enjoyable to play as. However, there are certain things involving certain characters that just don't line up. As an example, if you were to break somebody's stamina and immediately jump into limit breaker mode and using your ultimate attack, it's essentially GG from there. So I do think that going forward, what they ultimately need to do is improve the overall gameplay value. Every single time during every single match, whether you're on the receiving end of it or not, when a person breaks your stamina or someone's stamina is broken, the game goes downhill for that individual. Now there are no counters or loopholes to escape this, being the fact that Xenoverse 1 had a slight imbalance of gameplay in which Xenoverse 2 did improve, but nonetheless, if you were on the receiving end or if you were dishing out a stamina break, it's essentially GG from there. So the overall gameplay definitely needs to improve, and I think the one considerable factor that some people had an issue with was the timer, because you can't sit there and tell me that you as a gamer were never in a lobby to where you had one of the best fights of your life, only for it to boil down on time three simple minutes. I think that's a bit of an overstretch and they should at least give us five to at least ten if they want to go on ahead and give us a drawn out battle with the exception of 3v3s which extend to possibly 15 minutes online. But even with that being said going back to the characters, Dims and Bandai Namco did live up to their promise and word in giving us additional content being added into Xenoverse 2 within the last couple of months, in the last couple of years, which they did keep that promise. We've gotten so many awesome characters, so many awesome events, so many awesome parallel quest missions, but by the end of it, just when you thought a character was usable and playable during a match, it turns out that at some capacity, that character would either be severely underwhelming or incredibly broken. And sure, a lot of fans do have a lot of demands and are very entitled to what they want to see. For example, people still want to see a very, very Tenkaichi-esque like kind of roster be adapted for Xenoverse 2 or even Xenoverse 3. And what I mean by that is incorporating most of the GT characters, Dragon Ball characters, and Dragon Ball Z characters all into one, including Super and to some extent, Super Dragon Ball Heroes. So imagine that. Imagine having a game where essentially you have almost every single Dragon Ball character, every single Dragon Ball Z character, GT, Super, and Super Dragon Ball Heroes. That would be massive, and I don't think that in and of itself is realistic, but Xenoverse 2 did actually do a good job by incorporating lots of new characters within the game itself. As an example, during the Tournament of Power, we've got an MUI Goku, Jiren, Kefla, etc, etc. During the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, we've gotten Broly, Gogeta, etc, etc. Even going back towards the Merge Zamasu arc and getting Vegito Blue, Merge Zamasu, they did live up to those promises. However, can you imagine going forward if Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 adapted the story concept of Super Dragon Ball Heroes in giving us hearts, punish Zamasu, 
Cumber, Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken, Vegito, and many other characters of that nature. That would be a really cool thing, including possibly even another version of Few, and so many other characters down the line. However, I don't think that we will ever get the perfect Dragon Ball game because perfect is very subjective. As many people do think that the Tenkaichi series was perfect, some people think that the original Budokai series was perfect, so again, perfect is subjective. But I do think a larger roster with a unique dynamic to each character is essentially needed. Don't give me Broly and Cumber in the same game as Xenoverse 3 just to have them function and play the same. In terms of aura, presence, moveset, and of course style, each character needs to be different. And to that, Xenoverse 2 did do a good job in making every character feel different, but to an extent. Ultimately enough, besides their appearance, they all operated almost the same. And even though it is very subjective the way you want to look at Xenoverse 2, what Xenoverse 3 needs to do is simply adapt a different style in allowing every character to feel different, play different, and have their own style upon playing as them. For example, health, key, stamina, and many other things including durability, I don't think that every character should hit the same, I don't think that every character should take punishment the same, and I do ultimately believe that every single character should ultimately have their finishers be connected. As an example, how many times could you relate in Xenoverse 1 to Xenoverse 2 as playing as Goku having to launch the spirit bomb just to have your spirit bomb just drift out into the void? And in Xenoverse 1, if you guys remember, if you were to unleash and throw the spirit bomb, the sphere of destruction, moves of that nature, or hell, even the Kamehameha to an extent, Final Flash, these moves would essentially follow the target, whereas Xenoverse 2, let's say for example if we were to toss the spirit bomb, sphere of destruction, fire a Kamehameha, you're basically stuck there in an endless looped void just essentially waiting to have your stamina broke just so the other person can take advantage in taking you down. And also let's be realistic here, how many times have you played or seen someone play as someone like Beerus or Goku and even attempt to launch a spirit bomb or sphere of destruction? Do you want to know why? Is because essentially those moves are absolutely worthless. Not only is there a 90% chance that you're going to miss because the RNG and the overall netcode is completely busted, but the fact that it's no longer needed in a fight of that caliber, unless of course you're going to go as far as to break someone's stamina. But again, I do think that also they need to hold off on Xenoverse 3 in allowing that to be a next gen video game. PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox. Why? Because better graphics, better overall stabilization, and of course seeing what the next generation has to offer, I do think that by comparison it would be a really good thing to see a Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3-esque video game on the next gen consoles simply because those next gen consoles would be able to hold more do more and give us more bang for our buck given the fact that the next gen consoles are going to be head and shoulders better than the current systems. But again, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below about what you guys think Xenoverse 3 needs to adapt and fix going forward if that were to be the case. And I also want to get your thoughts on the roster, I want to get your thoughts on the overall gameplay, and I want to get your thoughts as to what you guys think could make a great Dragon Ball video game if Dimps and Bandai were to listen. Thank you all so much for watching guys, once more if you guys are new to this channel, consider smashing that subscribe button, slap a like down below if you guys just simply love Dragon Ball, and just patiently are waiting like the rest of us for a Xenoverse 3 video game, take the time to share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching guys once more, and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. Have a great day everybody, peace!